Switch gears to who's on second. Jeff McNeil sat out four straight games before returning to the lineup um, in London. He went two for four on Sunday with one run scored. Steve, how do you think those days off maybe gave him a spark or gave him a boost? Honestly, Nikki, we have to see. You know, I, I it's great that he came back in the lineup and had a couple of hits, and that's important. Don't get me wrong. But this has been not just a season-long slump, but a season-and-a-half-long slump for Jeff McNeil. And the unfortunate thing about a player like Jeff McNeil is that if he is not hitting 300, 310, 320, then his contributions are, are limited to a team in this day and age, especially if you're going to limit him to mainly playing second base. I, I think if you look at Jeff McNeil as a player, his appeal was that he you know, hits for high average and he can play a number of different positions. They're not really using him in the outfield as often this year. So he's playing second base. He's, again, if we're being honest, played a below average second base. And so if he doesn't hit at a, an extraordinary clip in this day and age, average wise, then you know, his, again, his upside is very limited. So good start for Jeff yesterday, but I think he's been put on notice and it's going to be very interesting in my mind to see what happens at the beginning of this Marlins series, because if I'm not mistaken, I think the Marlins are throwing two lefties in the first two games. And so you wonder if Iglesias gets those games, gets those starts against lefties because Iglesias has done nothing but hit and play stellar defense as he's come up. He did not you know, play poorly, and thus Jeff McNeil went back into the lineup. It just got to a point where, you know, you, you couldn't keep Benjamin McNeil. You had to give him a, a shot. So uh, hopefully it's a spark, and hopefully this is a reset for Jeff McNeil, and we see the 2022 version. But it is a very much wait and see with McNeil at this point for me. Yeah, and you just mentioned Jose Iglesias. He's been really, really solid. Connor, do you think that he could become the Mets' everyday second baseman? For this year, absolutely. Why not? I mean, if the guys he hit in Syracuse, he's come up to the major leagues and he's continued to hit. And like Gelbs pointed out, he's not a loss on the defensive side as well. And then here's the, the reality with the Mets at second base right now, right? We were coming into the season hoping Ronnie Mauricio was going to carry over some momentum from last year. He's out for the year with the injury during fall ball. That was a, a bigger blow when you look back on it now. McNeil, as his struggles have gone on, has been a problem. We'll see what the future brings for him, but it's a real wait-and-see approach. And then the other guy that everybody has one eye on is Luis Angel Acuna. But here's the reality with Acuna right now. Really slow start to the season in April where he hit 235. And then in May, he figured, to, you know, he kind of picked it back up. He hit 282. He stole 11 bases. He was kind of the guy, uh, this more slap contact hitter and make things happen on the base paths that you were waiting to see. And then June, only through eight games, but he's been hitting 171. So you need Acuna to really have a consistent stretch in AAA ball before you're bringing him up. So if McNeil's future is not with this team and Acuna is not ready, I mean, Steve, then Iglesias has to play. You need to play the guys that give you the best shot to win. And that's been him so far. Yeah, and I, I go back to something that you said earlier about the competition and the culture that's being created here. This is something that is not just about this year with this new group at the top. Carlos Mendoza has come in and he has brought a bit of an old school attitude. And this is not the type of, of team that you are just going to get a free ride. And I think David Stearns is the same way. And so whether it's what's going on at second base right now with Iglesias and McNeil, whether it's what's going on with the backup catcher job, which, you know, again, I think most other regimes would just say, hey, uh, we've got Alvarez coming back in a couple of weeks. No need to, to rock the boat. We'll have Nito or, or Narvaez for the next couple of weeks, and that's that. They didn't do that. They brought in uh, a guy in Terenz to compete, and and right now I think he's probably in the driver's seat to earn that backup catcher role. Uh, you saw with Vientos and Beatty. This is not a, a team that is just resting on their laurels, even with the, the season going the way that it, it has. And I think a lot of that has to do with not just this season, which is important, but also with creating this, this new culture about earning your way, which, you know, listen, we haven't seen all the time. We didn't see it last year. Daniel Vogelback got a ridiculous amount of rope. Brett Beatty got a ridiculous amount of rope last year. Um, it's, a new, it's a new way of doing things. There's a new sheriff in town, a new couple of sheriffs in town. And so for me, yeah, I, I think there is no question 
that Iglesias could be the starting second baseman for the remainder of the year if McNeil doesn't turn it around. Or quite frankly, even if he does and this team doesn't turn it around, there's every chance in the world that a lot of these guys are on the trade block heading into uh, heading into the late July. There's also some reports about Brett Beatty possibly switching to second base. So a lot going on. I think it's definitely competition in the team, which makes it good and a little bit more motivating. 